So now that we've introduced the idea of the uh, Office 365 Security and Compliance Center, and we've talked about permissions for it, let's also uh, let's dive into the alerts section. So alerts are policies we can put in place that if a specific event happens, it will notify us. So let's come down here and expand alerts. And we have three different areas here, the dashboard, the view alerts, and alert policies. Let's start with the dashboard. This is a real quick overview of everything going on. And remember, there's nobody actually in this account, so this looks really boring right now. So just imagine that we're actually doing this with a live organization. This is going to be our alert trends. And notice as I hover over a day, it will show me the day. The total number of alerts, how many were data loss prevention alerts, threat management, information governance, permissions, or others. Those are alert categories. So we group alerts into categories to kind of help us track what alerts we need to be aware of. We can also view categories by severity, high, medium, low severity. This will show us our recent alerts. This will allow us to view or edit alert policies, uh, create a new alert policy and then other alerts. So let's click on view alerts. So the dashboard is our real quick overview of all of our alerts. This is a more detailed view of our alerts. And you see if we had any, we'd have severity, the name, the status, the tags, the category. And really conveniently here, refresh to update with the latest information. Export is going to allow us to download this data so that we can then analyze it offline. And then very useful is filter. It will allow us to filter by statuses, active investigating resolved or dismissed, by policies, by the contributing user, the time range. We'll use this to filter out our events and choose which ones we want to look at and which ones we want to deal with. Now if we have an actual event, notice come back to the status we can identify things that are currently active, things that we're investigating. Be careful about the one that says dismissed. That means we're just going to ignore that alert. It doesn't mean we actually did anything about it. So that can sometimes be a little bit problematic, but you do have the ability to dismiss an alert, particularly maybe if it's an alert that you didn't really intend to monitor and you want to get rid of that uh, particular alert policy it might make sense to go ahead and dismiss it until you can do that. And then just to reset, we click clear our filters and that resets everything. Okay, so this is where we're going to look at them. What about how do we manage our alerts? Well, that's going to be under our alert policies. So here under alert policies, we're going to have a bunch of them that are predefined. Now again, we've got the option to filter over here, but let's just scroll through real quick before we filter. So here are all of our policies. Notice we have the name, the severity, the type, the category, the date modified, which you won't have any because these are all default. But this gives us our whole list of alerts. Now, we can edit these alerts a little bit, even though they're default. We'll go through here how to create a new alert policy in a few minutes. If you select more than one, so we select the first one, it brings it up to edit. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you select more than one, it switches to this bulk actions. And so now we have bulk actions because we've selected three different alert policies. And we can enable, disable, or delete. Notice this little note down here, system policies cannot be deleted, but they can be enabled or disabled. So if I don't want to see this, I can disable the selected policies. All right, let's take a look at our filter real quick. Let me uncheck these three before we do. All right, so let's do our filter, and we can filter by status, on or off. So let's just look at ones that are on. We can look at things by category, and let's just look at threat management at the moment. So I'm going to uncheck all of these others, and as I do that, you see this shifting a little bit. And then let's go to severity, and let's only look at things that are high. So we're going to check medium, low, and informational. All right. So this will give us just this set of policies. So let's uh, take a look at this one. And if I hover the mouse over it, you'll see that policy uh, description appears. 
So we're going to click on user restricted from sending email. Now, first thing I want you to notice, this bar across the top, auditing is not enabled. These policies may not work. So we click here to turn on auditing. There we go. So here is our auditing and we're going to click here to turn on auditing. Okay. Notice the warning. We're preparing the Office 365 audit log. You'll be able to search for user and admin activity in a couple of hours. Okay, great. So let's go back to our alert policies. Now that we have auditing on, maybe we'll actually get some events here, even though, you know, we're still not live. All right, back to my show me things that are on, show me things that are threat management. and show me things that are high severity. Okay, and close that filter screen. All right, user restricted from sending email. So let's go ahead and select that. All right, now notice that is gone away. We now have the option, or it's no longer telling us that auditing is not turned on. So some sections of this alert cannot be edited because it's a default policy, that's fine. We can set the status on or off. It will tell us here a little bit more about the description, the severity, and this is where it gets interesting. So conditions, activity is a single event for all users. Email recipients are tenant admins. That's a group of tenant administrators who will get emailed and daily notification limit. Now I can edit that and turn off my email notification if I want or I can change who my email recipients are. By default, it's tenant admins, which is administrators for the entire uh, Office 365 tenant. And then daily notification limit. How many times a day will this account be notified if this alert policy is triggered? Okay, so that is our basic alert policy and how we can find all of them find and filter all of them that are currently available. What if I want to create my own? Well, that's where we have the new alert policy. So let's click on new alert policy and we're going to give it a name of test and we could set a description. Now, this is the one, uh, one that you are creating. So you're going to define the severity. We're going to call this a medium severity event and you're going to define the category. And we'll do other. We'll just make this up as we go along and click next. All right, this is where we start defining what the alert activity is. So the activity is, and then we can, as we scroll down through, you're going to see a bunch of different activities. And you're going to see we have these nice little headings here. So common user activities, user submitted email, um, detected malware and file. Uh, shared file or folder, and as I hold over each one of them, notice that it does pop up that little uh, description telling us what it is. And you can find all of this stuff documented, all of these documented on uh, Microsoft site. Remember, they are constantly updating it, so what you find documented now, they may add more to later. All right, so let's choose, I like this one up here, uh, detected malware and file. So I'm going to select Detected Malware and File. So Office 365 Detected Malware in either a SharePoint or OneDrive file. Now I can start adding conditions to this as well. So I can add a condition based on the IP address, the user, the file name, the site collection URL, or the file extension. So let's say I want to look specifically for, uh, let's do... Let's do DOCX because we're not worried about the old versions of it. Okay, and then we can add additional conditions if we want as well. So now this alert is going to be triggered anytime we detect malware in a DOCX file on either SharePoint or OneDrive. Now, how often do we want or how do we want this alert to be triggered? Every time the activity matches rule. Now you can have, depending on the alerts that you're working with, you may have other options down here, but for this particular alert, this is my option. So I'm going to click next. Okay, so that's 
what's going to trigger the alert. Now, what are we going to do about it? Now, it's automatically going to be logged, and it's going to show up in our dashboard and in our list of alerts. Okay, so we know that's going to be there. So if we want, we don't have to be notified about every alert if we go back in and check on a regular basis. But if it's critical enough, we may want to be notified about it. So that's what this is, send email notifications. So we are going to send an email notification to myself. And then we can set the daily limit. How many times do I want to be notified? I'm going to set this at 10 because I want to know if we've got an issue, but I don't want to be completely overwhelmed by, you know, unlimited emails every single day. And click Next. And then here is where we can review all of our settings. And notice each one of these, I can come over here and I've got these great big boxes to edit all of them if I want to change everything. But this lets me review. And then I have this option here. I can turn on the policy right away, which means it becomes active immediately. Or I can say, you know what, I don't want this policy active now. I'm setting it up because I think we're going to use it in a little while, but I'm not going to turn it on just yet. So... We could click that and say finish. And here's our new policy. Now, notice right here, my status currently says it's turned off. If I click it, it gives me the option to turn it on. And now my status is currently active. Uncheck that, and there's my status. So, the name, hover over, it shows me the description, the severity, the type, the category, the date modified, and the current status. If I want to get rid of it, I've used this for a while, I decided, you know what, I don't need that anymore. Let's say you were, let's just pretend here, and let's say we were having a lot of issues with uh, malware showing up in Word documents. We could put this policy in place. I need you to notify me. I need to track it. We're going to keep an eye on this for a while until we put some mitigation tools into place. Over time, we realize, you know, within a couple of weeks, that's really dropped off. It looks like we've got this process under control. So I want to come down here and edit my policy. And let's say I only want to be notified one time a day now just to see because I still want to know if it happens again, but I think we've got it under control. A couple of weeks later, haven't had any notifications about it. All right, that's great. I'm going to switch this now from notifying to just let's view it in the log, and we'll see if it pops up in our log. Hopefully it doesn't. We've gone for a couple of months now, and we say, all right, we think we've got this completely resolved. We're going to delete the policy. That one might be a step too far, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. We delete the policy right here, and that goes away, and we are back to just our standard policies. All right, so that gives you an idea of how we can work with alerts in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center.